Welcome back. Today we will be in depth exploring about cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and triglycerides, the essential components of your body's lipid profile. Are you concerned to your LDL level? Which everybody knows that LDL is a bad component in our body. Are you worried that high LDL will definitely impact to cardiovascular heart disease? In this video, we'll unravel the mysteries of these molecules, from their formation to their vital roles in your health. Hopefully this explanation will change your mind about what to do with cholesterol. Okay, without any further ado, let's continue to Chapter 1. Chapter 1. What the Cholesterol is Cholesterol is a vital substance produced primarily in your liver. Cholesterol synthesis starts with a precursor molecule called acetyl-CoA, which undergoes a series of enzymatic reactions in the liver cells, ultimately forming cholesterol. The liver is a highly efficient organ responsible for synthesizing cholesterol in the body. On average, the liver produces about 1,000 mg of cholesterol per day, even in an information source mentioned that 3,000 mg per day. This production is tightly regulated by various factors, including dietary intake, hormonal signals, and the body's overall metabolic needs. However, it's important to note that the liver's cholesterol production can vary among individuals based on factors such as genetics, diet, and lifestyle habits. Okay, we are still far from conclusion, let's talk about the cholesterol functions. Number 1. The Raw Material for Cell Membranes All of the 100 trillion cells in your body have a membrane that contains cholesterol. Cholesterol is an integral component of cell membranes, where it helps maintain their fluidity and stability. It ensures that cell membranes are neither too rigid nor too permeable, allowing cells to function properly. Number 2. The Raw Material of Bile Production The liver converts cholesterol into bile acids, which are essential for the digestion and absorption of dietary fats and fat-soluble vitamins such as vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. Bile acids emulsify dietary fats, breaking them down into smaller particles that can be more easily digested and absorbed in the intestines. Number 3. Vitamin D Synthesis Cholesterol is a precursor for the synthesis of vitamin D, which is crucial for maintaining healthy bones and teeth, supporting immune function, and regulating calcium levels in the body. When sunlight hits the skin, cholesterol in the skin cells undergoes a series of chemical reactions, ultimately leading to the production of vitamin D. Number 4. Hormone Synthesis Cholesterol serves as a precursor for the synthesis of steroid hormones, including cortisol, aldosterone, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. These hormones play vital roles in regulating various physiological processes such as metabolism, stress response, reproduction, and electrolyte balance. Number 5. Neurotransmitter Function Cholesterol is essential for the proper functioning of neurotransmitters in the brain. It helps form lipid rafts, specialized regions of cell membranes where receptors and signaling molecules are concentrated, facilitating communication between nerve cells. And that is 5 function of the cholesterol. Cholesterol plays important role in our body. Cholesterol has a lot of functions, and our body didn't produce cholesterol including LDL without any good reason. Okay, let's continue to the next chapter. Chapter 2. The Breakdown of Cholesterol Components As it has been shared in Chapter 1, cholesterol is a vital substance produced primarily in your liver. The liver produced two types of cholesterol. First, HDL or high-density lipoprotein, and second, LDL or low-density lipoprotein. First, we will talk about HDL. HDL stands for high-density lipoprotein. It's often referred to as good cholesterol due to its beneficial effects on cardiovascular health. 
HDL is a complex particle composed of proteins and lipids, including cholesterol and phospholipids, that circulates in the bloodstream. HDL plays a crucial role in the reverse cholesterol transport process. It acts as a scavenger, picking up excess cholesterol from tissues, including arterial walls, and transporting it back to the liver for recycling or excretion. This process helps prevent the buildup of cholesterol in the arteries, reducing the risk of atherosclerosis and heart disease. Second is LDL. LDL stands for low-density lipoprotein. It's often referred to as bad cholesterol due to many people and doctors associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular diseases. We will share more about what they called as bad in this video. Actually, LDL plays a crucial role in transporting cholesterol from the liver, where it's synthesized to cells throughout the body. Cholesterol is essential for various physiological functions including cell membrane structure, hormone synthesis, and bile acid production. However, when LDL levels are elevated, excess cholesterol can accumulate in the walls of arteries, leading to the formation of plaques. Let's go deeply about LDL. I want you to understand that there are two types of LDL. They are called type A and type B, or alternatively pattern A and pattern B. First, type A is large and buoyant. It floats, and it lasts about two days in your body. It's not involved in any plaguing or clotting and is considered the more normal LDL. Second, type B is smaller and denser. It lasts about five days in your body, so the particles can be involved in the formation of plaques or clots. When someone has a heart attack or stroke, they tend to have more of the type B LDL. Even though type B potentially more closely associated with cardiovascular health risks, but one critical point to note is that type B is not bad. It is actually produced as a healing response like a bandage to the damage that a high-carb, high-sugar diet inflicts, making it simply one link in a chain of reactions to a harmful event in your body. Type B will form a plaque or clot to try to heal inflammation or a lesion in your body, in the same way if you cut yourself, you develop a scab as part of the healing process. Over time, the formation of enough plaques or clots can cause a heart attack or stroke, but your body doesn't think long term. Its concern is with immediate survival, and it will respond over and over again to try to heal inflammation and lesions. Lastly, it is important to highlight the triglycerides. Triglycerides are a type of lipid, or fat, found in your bloodstream. They are the most common type of fat in the body and are derived from the fats you eat in your diet or produced by your liver from excess calories. Triglycerides are essential for energy storage and metabolism, Elevated levels of triglycerides in the bloodstream, known as hypertriglycerium, can increase the risk of cardiovascular diseases such as heart disease and stroke. High triglyceride levels are often associated with other metabolic abnormalities, including obesity, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. Okay, after you know about the common lipid profiles in the blood test, it's time to go to the next chapter. Chapter 3. Cardiovascular Heart Disease By going through the two chapters, we can see that LDL is not totally bad, it just part of LDL which is potentially bring cardiovascular disease risk. Also, there is simple trick to know about either you are having high cardiovascular risk or not, by looking at HDL to triglycerides ratio. If your triglycerides are high but your HDL is low, chances are you have more of the potentially problematic type B LDL or small size cholesterol particle. This is what I most often see when my patients first come to me and they're on a diet high in carbs and sugar. The ideal ratio of triglycerides and HDL is less than 2. But if your triglycerides are low and your HDL is high, Chances are you have more potentially healthy type of LDL or large bouillon cholesterol particle, which means, so far so good. 
In order to avoid the cardiovascular heart disease, we should aim these things to overall LDL condition. Number 1. Promoting higher level of type A LDL. Higher level of type A LDL can be achieved by eating saturated fat, especially the healthy fats such as avocados, seeds, liver meats. Number 2. Decreasing type B LDL. Some of actions can achieve to lower type B LDL. First, reduce stress, in order to reduce an healthy level of cortisol hormone. Second, eliminate the usage of vegetable oils such as soy oil, corn oil, and canola oil. Vegetables oils can promote inflammation since it has very long process and contain high of omega-6 which pro-inflammation. Third, Eliminate of ultra-processed food which contain high of trans fats. Fourth, eliminate glycation. When you combine sugar and protein together, or sugar with fat, then bake or fry it, the result is called glycation, which creates higher levels of type B LDL. High fructose corn syrup or amounts of other high fructose products can increase glycation by 10 times. After you know our action plan of promoting higher type A LDL and decreasing type B LDL, lastly, don't forget to reduce inflammation in blood vessel. High sugar intake can contribute to chronic low-grade inflammation and oxidative stress, which are implicated in the development and progression of cardiovascular diseases. Excessive sugar consumption can activate inflammatory pathways and increase the production of reactive oxygen species which leading to endothelial dysfunction, arterial stiffness, and atherosclerosis. In conclusion, while cholesterol is essential for various physiological processes, it's important to maintain a balance. Elevated levels of type B LDL cholesterol and triglycerides, can increase the risk of cardiovascular diseases such as atherosclerosis, heart attack, and stroke. Thanks for watching. We hope that this information will change your point of view about cholesterol. Please support this channel by touch the subscribe button below. See you in the next video.